In Revelation 13, it gives us details about the Antichrist, and now the false prophet. The first beast was the Antichrist, and the second beast is the false prophet. Both are members of the Satanic Trinity. In Revelation 13, 11 through 18, we will see details about the false prophet. But number one, we see the false prophet is sly. He's slick, and he tricks people. Revelation 13, 11. It says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The fact that this character is coming up out of the earth could imply a resurrection. He could be another character who has been here before and is coming back again. The most deceiving characteristic about the false prophet is that he is sly. He has two horns like a lamb, which makes him seem innocent and trustworthy. He speaks as a dragon. That's because a false prophet is the mouthpiece for the devil, and his words are deceiving and positive. Romans sixteen eighteen says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They deceive by talking positive and saying good things. Colossians 2, 4 and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Just like the Antichrist, he will be slick with words. The book of Psalms says the Antichrist's words are smoother than butter. In Psalms fifty-five twenty and 21, it says, He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. Not only is the false prophet a sly devil, he also has satanic powers. Revelation thirteen twelve, it says, And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation thirteen two, says. And lets us know that the Antichrist, which is the first beast, gets his power from the devil. He gets his power from the devil himself. So if the false prophet exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, then he has satanic power himself. And uh, the false prophet is going to be making speeches. And they're going to have a lot of power over the lost world. And I imagine his speeches will be trending on the internet. And they will start out with a satanic secular rock band or rapper. Uh, there is power in the music that the devil uses. Music also involves the worship of something. Remember how Nebuchadnezzar caused people to worship an idol when they heard the music. So he will cause the world to worship the Antichrist. Who had the deadly head wound. Similar to how the Holy Spirit points you in the direction of Jesus Christ. The false prophet will do the same job for the Antichrist. With his satanic power he will easily deceive the hearts of the people. And number three his satanic powers cause him to be a showman. In Revelation 13.13 13, it says and he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth, on the earth, in the sight of men. Second Thessalonians two nine shows us the Antichrist will have power and signs and lying wonders. I believe the false prophet will do the same things. Revelation thirteen thirteen says he maketh fire come down from heaven. He will deceive with these signs, and people will think he is from God because of these signs and miracles. And the best thing to prove you are a man of God is to speak the words of God. Because the visible signs like calling down fire from heaven can be counterfeited. And he will do this in the plain open sight of men, possibly streamed live on the internet. Calling down fire from heaven will amaze the people on earth, and people are fascinated with superhuman talent and abilities. This is why shows like America's Got Talent are so popular. Uh, Satan has false Christs, false prophets, false apostles, 
and these men will work miracles in the time of Jacob's trouble. If you look at Revelation 16, 13, and 14, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's the satanic trinity. And for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. So they're miracle workers. But not only is the false prophet a showman, he shows off his satanic powers, he is also a spokesman. Revelation thirteen fourteen says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And God has always been against making an image. In Exodus 20 and verse 4 it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. But we are living in a world that is all about images. People are worried about their own image. People like to take images of themselves. There are whole apps on smartphones dedicated to images. On apps like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Uh, the technology is there to make an image that can appear in your home. This is a possibility. However, maybe it will be a, just a statue. Uh, this is why the Antichrist is referred to as the idle shepherd. In Zechariah eleven seventeen, idle as in I-D-O-L. We are seeing the way being paved for the Antichrist to show up because men love to worship other men. And that is why you have shows like American Idol. But the false prophet is going to be the spokesman for the Antichrist. He will promote him and cause people to worship the beast in his image. And you can probably imagine him proclaiming the Antichrist as God since he had a wound by a sword and did live. He is a showman, a spokesman. He is sly. And number five, he is also a sorcerer. Revelation thirteen fifteen, he says, And he had powers to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You see that magicians are becoming more and more popular. As I said earlier, the show America's Got Talent, they have a lot of magicians. The sorcerers Janus and Jambres, which stood Moses in the book of Exodus, they realized Moses had the power of God. Uh, Simon the sorcerer was amazed by the power of the disciples. Although the false prophet will have the same kind of powers as these other wicked men, his power can't touch the power of God like Moses and the disciples. He gives life to the image of the beast. And you see this idea in children's movies like Pinocchio, where a doll or image is given life. And the movie Small Soldiers has the same idea. Toys are given life in that movie as well. And there is no new thing under the sun. Satan can give life as long as he gets permission from God. Just like with anything else he does. Although he can't create life out of nothing like God did. Anyone who doesn't worship this image will be killed. And this is going to be a horrifying time on the earth. The false prophet is also a supporter of a one world monetary system. So he is a spokesman, a showman, a sorcerer. He's sly. And he's a supporter of a one-world monetary system. He's going to be all about a one-world government under the first beast. Revelation thirteen sixteen and 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So everyone in the world will have to have this mark to buy food, clothes, get gas, have a job, and even just continue on living. Who knows what the mark of the beast is? Some say it is a microchip. Some say it is a tattoo. Some say it is a credit card. And if you don't take it and you get caught, then they will just kill you. If you do take it, then you will have to suffer the second death in the lake of fire. As Revelation fourteen nine and 10 says, 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation thirteen eighteen. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. It is the number of a man, which is the beast. And you see the 666 being promoted today in the music industry. Musicians will put the number on their album covers and in their songs. The rapper, the notorious B.I.G., wanted to start a 666 clothing line. This is the Antichrist number, just like 13 is Satan's number and 7 is God's number. And in verses like John 6, 66... It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So you'll see a theme with the number 666. It's negative. And a few verses later, after that, John 666, it talks about Judas Iscariot being an actual devil. No doubt about it, this number is connected with wickedness in the Bible. And I believe the church will be raptured out before the time of Jacob's trouble and before the 666 is even implemented. A born-again Christian in the body of Christ has no chance of taking the mark because we won't be here. And you can see this pictured in the book of Joshua. Take note that Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible. If you look at the sixth book of the Bible, in chapter 6 and verse 5, it says this, And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So you can see here there is a long blast with the ram's horn, and they hear the sound of the trumpet, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. If you think about the rapture of the church, what happens? We hear the trump, and we ascend up in the clouds to meet Jesus in the air. But check this out. This is in the sixth book of the Bible, which is Joshua. Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible. We're in chapter 6. So you have the sixth book of the Bible, a 6 there, chapter 6, another 6, and then we're in verse 5. What happens in verse 5? A trumpet sounds and the people ascend it up. So you have people ascending up before chapter 6 and verse 6 in the sixth book of the Bible. So even the way the chapters and verses and the order of the books are laid out lines up with the teaching of the rapture and so this is a picture of the church being raptured out before the 666 comes now look what it says in verse 6 of joshua the sixth book of the bible in chapter 6 and verse 6 it says and joshua the son of nun called the priests and said unto them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. Now notice it mentions seven trumpets. This is a picture of the church leaving out before the 666 shows up and before the seven trumpets. The Bible is an amazing book. But this has been the end of Revelation 13.